The temperature is not controlled within a cold frame and they depend upon the sun to provide the warmth needed for the plants. They're also usually very easily vented to avoid overheating. Many people purchase greenhouse kits for their gardens, not realizing they're actually constructing a cold frame. If they're unable to control the environment within, which usually isn't a problem as long as it serves its purpose. There are many methods of season extension. You can go low tech to high tech. And we're gonna talk as we progress through this discussion about why you might want to use a cold frame to protect plants from fall or from the spring cold. As we've seen, what is better looking? A blanket in the yard or an attractive mini greenhouse? Have you ever broken plants when you spread a blanket over them? How about missed a frost or a freeze warning? Uh, especially in our climate, we know we might get a frost and have warm weather throughout all of October. We can use different forms of cold frames to grow cool season vegetables or just to keep our tomatoes alive and growing. We can keep our flowers growing and blooming well past the first frost. We can overwinter our plants and they may be dormant, uh, but we can keep them viable and somewhat protected from the elements for the use of a cold frame. We can even use a cold frame as an early start for seeds in the spring. By starting our own seed, we can save money, we can avoid the diseases and insects that may come with purchase starts and just have the, the rest of the satisfaction of knowing exactly what we are growing. When you do plan to start seeds and plants early, you want to make sure that you set it where the light is good. That is extremely important to starting seeds and plants early. The quality and duration of the light is, is crucial to your successful plant starting. You might need a fan on your young, young seedlings. That helps prevent leggy plants. You do want a daytime temperature of 60 to 70 degrees and nights no lower than 50 degrees. If you have a cold frame, you want to make sure that you are properly uh, venting it, watching it, monitoring the temperature, etc. The size of the container when you're starting seeds matters because as long as it's big enough, you're not going to have root bound plants. And the timing is crucial, again, to getting plants in the ground in a timely manner. If you are using a portable cold frame, be sure to set it in place about a week before you plan to set your starts out. Either plant the seeds in trays or directly into the ground if you plan to remove the cold frame when the weather warms up. Most vegetables can be started a couple of weeks before the predicted first last frost date. If it gets very cold for an extended period of time after you start them, you may want to bring the trays inside for a period of time, or you may want to put a warm blanket around the frame. You can acclimatize your purchased plants by placing them directly into the cold frame as well. So what are the guidelines for a working cold frame? Number one, establish the frame in direct sunlight. 
place it on good soil in a well-drained location. You need that drainage in order to make sure that it doesn't get soggy in there. It needs to be slightly sloped. Why easy access to the house? Because if it's not convenient, we won't keep an eye on things. We need to be able to walk out, make sure it's not too hot or too cold. If it's too hot, we need to be able to open the hinge on that cold frame and prop it up to get some air in there. Uh, you wanna make sure that if you're doing a, just a standard cold frame, you angle the transparent top to, top to the south. Sidewall should be between eight to six inches, 16 inches high. Why? Because your plants are gonna grow every bit that high. And again, I, I'm gonna emphasize again that you wanna use a hinged frame because you wanna be able to open that cold frame. You also wanna be able to have access to the plants in the cold frame. Here are a couple of examples of cold frames. Uh, there are many, there are many kinds of cold frames or hot beds. You can take a purchased mini greenhouse. You can use a frame and old windows. You can use a frame with hard or rigid plastic attached to it. Again, I'm going to emphasize you need that hinge top because you need to have access to the plant and you need to be able to regulate the heat and the airflow in the cold frame. Cold frames don't have to be covered. You can have a frame with hoops and no fixed lid or top. Using row cover material over hoops, that will hold heat, protect the tender plants, and provide easy access. If you plant into the ground, this method is very simple because there's no transplanting needed. Just set some hoops, put your plants directly into the ground, use this floating row cover, that's the proper term for it, to cover and maintain the heat temperature in for the plants as, as the tender uh, plants are starting to grow. They'll also help you harden off the plants uh, that you might be putting out in the field. You can also use lattice or a snow fence to shade plants if needed. Here's another methodology for using a cold frame, late summer seeding. Uh, you might plant broccoli, pepper, spinach, or lettuce in August and get an early winter harvest, maybe close to Thanksgiving. You've got fresh vegetables that are going, but why do you need a cold frame on them? Because you're gonna get a cold snap, it might damage those plants, it might keep them from fully maturing. Uh, it, cold frames also in the fall will provide frost protection for sensitive plants like tomatoes. In the spring, spinach will germinate and grow in temperatures that are just above freezing. Read your seed packets carefully, of course, and be sure to vent your cold frame during the day when temperatures are above 50 degrees. Remember that if the temperatures are above 50 degrees, you want to vent that cold frame. Uh, and oh, by the way, critters and pests will survive in the warm. So be aware of that possibility. You might open that frame and get some kind of a surprise. Just remember whatever's in there is probably as surprised as you are that that door opened. So again, if you're gonna plant leafy greens, lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard or parsley, those will do fine in cool weather with lower light. They'll, 
they'll actually be better. You know, as we know, when it gets hot and the light is more direct, those plants do not thrive nearly as well. You can also use a cold frame, number one, as a wintering container for certain plants that you're just gonna let go dormant. And you can also do some early forcing of tulips and hyacinths and daffodils and crocus so you can have those flowering plants to enjoy very early in the spring. Another thing that we use, I'm sorry, I accidentally switched, is what's called a hotbed. And in a hotbed, you can lay, dig a hole about six inches deep, more like a trough, lay heating table in it and cover it with sand. Then put your plants on top of that preferably in a container, and you can provide some extra heat for those plants in the spring, outside in the cold frame. Another method that you can use is to add manure when you're gonna plant right into the ground, into a 10 inch deep hole, add horse or chicken manure, cover it with a window screen, cover with soil. The other thing that it will do is provide, it will generate heat and provide some heat from the ground up as it decomposes. Here are a couple of examples of cold frames that you may or may not have seen. If you've ever traveled in the South in the winter, you may have seen palm trees like the one on the left wrapped in insulation and that protects it against the cold. Palms do not do well when there's a hard freeze. And so to protect the plants, they, they wrap the trunks in various materials. You can also use a cold frame design that is made specifically for sunny Southern, southern states that still have an occasional temperature drop well below freezing for a short period of time. Uh, on the next building to the left is a small, maybe a handmade greenhouse, uh, upcycled old doors and windows that were tied into a frame. Uh, it's an excellent idea for a space that simply doesn't fit uh, the more traditional kit designs. And of course, it's much more economical as well. And uh, it doesn't really take that much longer to put together as long as you've got a vision and a plan in place. Uh, the next one over is a size of a frame that's made for a more permanent location where you might start your plants or provide overwintering. It can serve as an all season protection as well for certain types of plants that don't grow over the top of the frame. And so remember that, that you don't wanna put something in a cold frame that's gonna outgrow the cold frame if you don't plan to move it because the lid is gonna go down and crush those plants. So you need something, that's why the walls are eight to 16 inches high because you wanna accommodate plants that will normally grow to that length to that height and not higher. And finally, on the far right, the little miniature cold frame showcases an old fashioned design uh, that gardeners who have a small plot of land or an urban area might want to use. They aren't large in size, but they're perfect for small potted plants and they are highly decorative. They're very attractive. So here's a couple resources. Uh, building and using hotbeds and cold frames on the extension.missouri.edu website, guide sheet 6965 can be downloaded and used. In addition, there's an article that I referenced, uh, extension.missouri.edu news, using cold frames and hotbeds for a longer growing season. Of course, there are many more resources out there by all means, consider me a resource and contact uh, my office 
at 573-369-2394. You can ask for me. You can also email me, Barrett, PR at Missouri.edu. I love talking to gardeners and I love talking gardeners, gardening. So thank you and have a great day.